glad that you're here today because it's a great place to be. You know, it's a little foggy outside, but uh, it's nice and warm and dry inside. Now, if you're visiting with us, we're honored that you come and joined us today here in God's house as we worship the Lord. There is a tear-off there on the bulletin if you'd like to give us a record of your visit today. Or if you'd, if you'd like to put a prayer request down here or if you'd like to have any information that you can give us, uh, just drop that in the plate when it comes by with the offering here in just a little bit. I do want to say that there's a lot of things going on. In fact, Wednesday night we had a great time. I think it was about 78 fo folks here Wednesday night from a preacher from Romania came and shared a little bit about his church and what is going on over in Romania. I think some of the kids enjoyed hearing his talk, and uh, it's good to know that there's other people across the other side of the world uh, ministering. We can pray for them. Uh, this week, uh, we have some ministries going on for the ladies and the men. The ladies on Thursday at 1130 will be meeting at uh, Rolo's uh, for a birthday luncheon. So ladies, if you'd like to go to that, please let uh, Janice Settler know. I saw that she didn't have, uh, know how many people to get seats for at Rolo's. Uh, men, uh, at 6.30 Thursday, uh, we come together and we just bring different things, chicken fingers, uh, we bring pizza. We bring whatever our wives are sending up here with us, okay? And we have a good time of fellowship and have a little devotion time uh, and sort of build our relationship together with our men. So I invite you to come and join us for that as well. Uh, you see some other things there in your bulletin. Uh, one very important one, don't forget that next Sunday, you turn your clocks ahead. I don't want to see y'all coming in when we're going out. That's the thing, you know, so... Uh, make sure you turn your clocks back up, up forward uh, next Sunday. Uh, one other thing, this is the first of March of our uh, first Sunday of March. So who do we have here today that has a birthday in March? If you'll stand. Stand up if you got it. There's another one. There's another one. Happy birthday to you. God blesses you very much. Let us begin our service in prayer. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your love and kindness. We're so thankful for your presence here today. And I pray, Lord, that you just fill our cups here today. I pray, Lord, that we leave just overflowing to where uh, people that we come in contact with will be able to know we're here in your house and in your presence. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless the music, uh, bless your word, and bless each person that's here this day. Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Very good to see each one of you here today. Let's sing together to the Lord.
continue our worship this morning with Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
please stand with me once again. Let's sing together. Amazing grace. song will be It Is Well With My Soul. We'll sing all three verses.
Lord, thank you for another day to come to church and just get to sing your praises and worship. Lord, thank you for everyone here today. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. I pray that during this offering, we can give back a portion of that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Somewhere beyond the grave, there is a land where Jesus went to prepare by his own hand. And for the saved by grace, there is a rest place and then a few more days it will be mine some call it heaven I call it home some call it dreaming let me Some call it paradise, somewhere beyond the skies, some call it heaven, I call it Someone said you can't go back home again. Things will not ever be as good as they've been. I've got good news for you. When heaven comes into view, one glimpse and you will know the best is yet to come. Some call it heaven. I call it home. Some call it dreaming. Let
some call it heaven, I call it home. Stand once again, we've reached the fellowship time of our service, so we're going to sing a verse of On Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand. And then uh, we're going to take a few minutes to welcome everyone, make sure they've been greeted while the children go to Children's Church. And then we'll sing the last verse just before Mylon comes to preach.
This morning, let's be in, uh, remember to be in prayer for Brother Ed Hill. He will be having a knee replacement surgery, I believe, on Tuesday. So let's pray that uh, that goes well and that he gets back with us quickly. Father God in heaven, Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to worship you, Lord. I, as we come to the time in our service when we uh, will hear the word proclaimed, Father, I, I pray for my pastor today. I pray for Brother Milan, Lord. I pray that you would strengthen him physically, Lord, that you would anoint the word that you've given him to share with us today, Lord. Help us to take that word with us, Lord, and help us uh, to be changed by the hearing of your word proclaimed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you join me this morning in God's word in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. I'd like to talk this morning about faith blockers, faith blockers. Of course, faith is very, very important. I'll talk about that uh, this morning. Uh, faith does so many things. In fact, we get our salvation through faith. It's the key to salvation. Not only that is our salvation, but it's the key also for Christ dwelling in our heart. You know, that, that's really something that when Christ comes into our heart. Can you imagine the, the ability that you have to face life when Christ is living inside of you, and he does that through faith. Not only do we have that salvation in Christ dwells in us, we're able to live, live the life that God has for us through faith. We overcome things that come our way, things that we don't think that we can handle, like David when the, uh, uh, before Goliath and the bear and, and, and all these things that come into his life. He was able to do that through faith. Faith is very important. We're able to stand the test that we have to stand when we have to stand against the test of temptation, the test of uh, doing things that God's not happy with us. We can do that through faith. We have access to the throne of God anytime we need to. Isn't it a wonderful day to just pick up the phone and call somebody when you have a need? It's wonderful. He's our great physician. You, you try to call your local doctor, I can imagine you, you're not going to call him and he's going to pick it up and say, hey, what can I do for you? But you can call the great physician. You have access to God. You can fight this fight that we have to fight in this life, but we do it through faith. We can run in this race that God has put us in, but you have to do it through faith. Faith is so very, very important. Here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, I hadn't really seen what God's going to do, but I, I, I have faith that God's going to make it happen. I can't explain it, but I have faith and confidence and I trust in him and that's the key that we have to have to see success. We haven't seen what God's going to do yet. I haven't, man, I, I'll be honest. I, I'm about Brindley Mountain Baptist Church. God allowed me to come and be the pastor here. And, and I'm, I've been excited the whole time. I really have. I've been excited. I get to looking around at what God is already doing. And I look around at what he's going to do. And it gets me excited. When I see those people, especially the young folks, getting involved, it, it, it's great and marvelous. But I don't think God's finished. 
as long as we have faith. There's so many things that want to block our faith. He wants to put a sign up and stop and say, this is far enough. I want to go as far as God wants me to go. I've shared this before. I, I'm, I, I know I'm 64 years old. But if there's a present under that tree at Christmas time, it's got my name on it, I want it, okay? I don't know what it is, but I want it. It's got my name on it. I'm not so sure if it's got my son-in-law's name on it. It's coming to him. I don't know if I want it or not. But I do know one thing. If God's name's on it, I want what he's got to give me, don't you? I want what he's got to give me. Don't you? In order to get that, it says it takes faith. It takes faith. It's a response. We need to be responsible and have faith in our life. Verse 2 it says, By it, the elders obtained a good report. People before me used faith, and God blessed them. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. They don't appear by things that do appear. In other words, we can't imagine how it works. We can't even start to imagine. I know my wife, she's a great cook, and she's got all kind of different ingredients in our house. A lot of times she starts putting stuff in, in, in the stuff she's cooking, and I said, I don't like that. She said, well, you've been eating it for years. You may not believe this, but she even sneaks spinach in on stuff, you know. But she'll tell me sometimes, uh, well, I'd make that, but I don't. I need something else. I don't have everything I need, and you've got to go to the store and get it. In other words, she has to have the ingredients to make it work. God don't even have to have the ingredients. He can just whip it up. He can just speak it. We may look at our situation in our life and say, well, God needs this, and God needs that to work. And God, God doesn't need anything but you to have faith. God can just whip it out. He can make it work. We limit God so many times because we throw so many blockers up before him. Some of the blockers are unbelief. We just don't believe God can change our situation. We don't think God can do anything with our lives. The biggest blocker I think people have is unbelief. God can't do that. Self-reliance is another blocker that we throw out there so many times. We want to help God. We want to put our part into it, and we limit ourselves. That blocks our faith. A lot of times we just idly sit by and do nothing. God tells us to do certain things. If we don't do what God tells us to do, it doesn't happen either. These are just facts this morning. We, we can debate facts all we want to, but facts are facts. Sin is sin. People in this world we live in today, they like to debate what sin is, but it still doesn't change. If God says it's sin, it's sin. Y'all agree with that, don't you? Don't we not live in a society that said that's not sin? They say the church says that's sin. No, the church doesn't say that's sin. God says that's sin. So if you debate it to say it's okay, does it change the fact that it's still sin? No, it's still sin. The same thing also about faith. A lot of people say that they have faith and it doesn't do anything. You can debate this is faith. I've got faith. But I do tell you, I will tell you one thing about faith. The fact is, if we use true faith, God works. True faith, God works. It, throughout this book of Hebrews, it talks about Abel, it talks about Enoch, it talks about Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and Rahab. It gives us so many people that it had faith had such an impact in their life. But you know, you may say that's Old Testament, that's in the Bible, that's way back long before my time. I believe this. I got faith that what God did back in Moses' time, He can do in my time. I believe back in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell upon that, those group of people 
I believe the same God, I got faith that God can do great miracle things today. I believe he can save multitudes of people. I believe he can change lives. I believe that's a fact. I believe that's a fact. He said that a little bit in verse 6. He said, but without faith, listen to me, it is impossible to please him. Who's that? That's God. I'm not pleasing to God. You're not pleased. That's a fact today. We're not pleasing to God without faith. So God needs to see our faith. We need to exercise our faith. And our faith needs to believe in God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, I, I love being in God's house. I love to hear God, the, the choir sing and the special sings and the people, the congregation sing. I love to come together. And, and, and I just get a warm feeling. I told Sam and Glenda a little earlier, I, I, I'm a little bit under the weather today and didn't really feel that good to be here today. But I was walking through the foyer, and all of a sudden I heard two angels in the sanctuary singing. It just made me feel better. Made me feel better. When I got saved as a teenager, we used to go up to church 10, 12 o'clock at night. And just saying, just being in God's house just gave me this the confidence that God can take care of everything. Folks, we can get out in the world and listen to so many different things. We can listen to the bad things that's going on. We can look at where our government's going, where our society's going, our community's going, our children, our young people. And, you know, we can get discouraged, but we can come to God's house and all of a sudden we start having faith, not in people, not in government, but we can have faith in God. I like to be around that group of people, don't you? Gives me more, po be, makes me more positive because I need to have faith in order to be pleasing to God. He said, also, that's what Noah did. He said, Noah being uh, warned of God of things not seen as yet. Said, things are going to come, but you need to get ready for it. And I'm going to tell you, as a pastor at Brenda Mountain Baptist Church, you may have faced a lot of things. But let me tell you something. Worse things are still going to come. And we need to prepare ourselves, get ourselves ready, and we do that, and the key is through faith. And when they come, we want to be prepared and not trying to make up ground. Noah didn't wait until it started raining to start building that ark. 120 years before. But when that rain started, guess what? He was saved because he acted in faith of something he hadn't even seen yet. Hadn't even seen yet. Throughout this chapter, it goes on saying so many different things. How Abraham did the same thing, not knowing what to come, but he prepared himself. I like what 13, verse 13 says. These all died in faith, not having received the promise but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and, uh, and pilgrims on this earth. God has placed me here and not the world in which I belong, not in the world in which I'm going to live for, for eternity. I'm, I'm in a pilgrim. I need to prepare myself, and I do that through faith. I'm going to give us three examples this morning real quickly. You don't have to... Well, before I give you those examples, I, I just want to say, a lot of people didn't think that God cares about us. He cares about so many other folks. Some people are blessed. Some people believe that. Some people are blessed more than other people. You ever thought that? Why does he bless some people more than other people? The psalmist says it this way. He said, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. You know what that word trust means? Have faith. Have faith. In the Lord is what he said. And he is your help and your shield. That's what he said to Israel. He said to the house of Aaron, trust. That means faith in the Lord. And he shall help and help and be their shield. And you that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. And he is your help and your shield. 
It didn't matter what your, 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 your granddaddy was or your dad is or what your situation is. If we have faith, it still works the same way. It still works the same way. It doesn't matter if you're the, from the tribe of Israel. It still works. We have to have faith. He goes on to say in the book of Psalms, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us, and he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. So why does God bless some more than others? Let me tell you, the key is faith. The key is faith. If we think God never blesses us, Maybe our faith is being blocked in some way or another. Folks, we need to uh, put those blocks away from us. We want to put those things far from us and have faith in the Lord. Let me give you three things real quickly. and uh, You don't have to turn with me, but I'm going to read a little story from Matthew about Jesus. It says in Matthew 17, 14, if you don't write that down, you can read it later. It's when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, knelt down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. My son has problems. He's so vexed, and often he falls into the fire, and sometimes into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. They couldn't cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. This is what Jesus said. Faithless. You don't have faith. He's upset at these people because God wants to do great things in their life, but they don't have faith. He said, how long shall I be with you? And how long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Bring him to me because I've got, I've got faith. And they brought this young man to Jesus. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Do you think that Jesus had, had more ability to cast those devils out of that young man than the disciples? He did because he had faith. Because he had faith. Jesus rebuked him and he left and said, and Jesus rebuked the devil, and they departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples unto Jesus, and they said, Why couldn't we cast out this demon out of him? Why couldn't we do that, Jesus? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your He said, that, that, Because of your unbelief, it blocked your faith. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove, thence be yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. We can talk about there's nothing impossible to God. There's nothing impossible to you with faith. You had unbelief. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Why did it take prayer and fasting? Because sometimes we've got to get a lot of things out of our mind. We've got to get ourselves in a place to have faith in God. It's easy to say I have faith, isn't it? It's easy to say I have faith. But what about deep, deep down in the heart? Do we have doubt? Do we have doubt? He said, you have doubt. You need to get down in some deep prayer. And you need to get let God remove that doubt. You need to fast. You need to get away from the fleshly things that you're enjoying. You need to get away from any distractions. That's why I love coming to God's house. It helps me get away from the distractions. And when we get to that point, all of a sudden our faith becomes much stronger and bolder. Where we can, nothing becomes impossible to us. 
They had the blocking of their faith because of unbelief. It says also, it tells a little story about Naaman. In 2 Kings chapter 5, it tells a story about a man that had leprosy. And he goes down to the, uh, the man of God, and this is what he said. Naaman came with his horse, horses and his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. You know, I can imagine Naaman says, you know, he, he's honored that I've even come to him. I, I can imagine what he was thinking. He, he's a noble man. He's a man that's been looked up to all of his life. And he goes in with all his horses and his chariots, and he comes to the man of God. He's asking for help. And he goes on and says, Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And Naaman, after he got the word from the man of God, what did he do? How, what was his response? We find that many times on Sunday morning comes invitation time is our response to the word of God. Our response to the word of God is crucial to the outcome to the word of God, isn't it? I'm going to say that one more time. Nudge anybody that looks like they're sleeping inside you so they'll remember this. It's important. It's important. Our response is important to the word of God. He was angry, and he went out and said, this is what he said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out unto me and stand and say on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place, and he would recover the leprosy. Isn't it amazing? Naaman knew what the man of God was supposed to do. He goes on to say that the river far part and... What was the other one? Far par. Anyway, there was plenty of rivers out there. He should have went there. I could have gone washed in those rivers. But that wasn't what the Word of God said. Sometimes we think, seem to think that I just need to do what I think needs to be done. We need to get ourselves out of it, don't we? Because when we put ourselves in it, it stops our faith. The faith of God is not powerful anymore. It doesn't work anymore when we put ourselves in it and our spin on it. I've known preachers that could do uh, Jimmy Swaggart. Some of you older ones remember Jimmy Swaggart. Man, he I, I used to listen to Jimmy Swaggart, and he, he'd get up and preach, and man, he'd get to preaching, and all of a sudden during his preaching, he'd cut down to singing, go to singing while he's preaching. I thought, man, that's what I ought to do. No, the Lord said, no, don't you sing. <laughs> but you know, we, we seem to think we need to do certain things. We've got to add to it. But in time we add to the word of God, we pollute it, don't we? That's what they did to the manna that fell from heaven in, in, in the wilderness. God sent the manna, and they thought, hmm, we're going to add some onions to this. We're going to put some herbs with this. And guess what? It spoiled it. It messed it up. When we put our own labor in it and our own work in it, we mess it up. What faith is, I just go by faith and nothing else. Some people may want to think, well, I'm going to quit this habit. I'm going to quit that habit. I'm going to take up this Bible reading. I'm going to take up working in the church. I'm going to take... Baptism, I'm going to take all those things. Look, you're just polluting things. God said just have faith and do what God tells you to do. The Sunday I got saved, I had no clue what I was doing. I just felt the urge of God pulling me to go down, pulling me to go and say, I want salvation in my life. And I, I'm going to tell you how I was. I didn't know what he was going to tell me I needed to do. But I tell you what, whatever that preacher told me I was going to do that day, I was going to do it. If he told me to goggle peanut butter in my mouth, standing on my head in front of everybody, I was going to try. Because I was willing to do whatever I was supposed to do. A lot of times we limit God, and when we limit God, what we're willing to do, that blocks our faith. Naaman thought, I thought he ought to do this, and I thought he ought to do that. 
A lot of people come to the churches and they say that too. I've been preaching for a long time. I've had people tell me all, all throughout my ministry, all throughout my ministry, preacher, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. You know what we need to do? It's what God's Word tells us to do. It's what God's Word tells us to do. If He tells you to teach, you teach. If He tells you to work in the nursery, you work in the nursery. If he tells you to be a prayer warrior, you be a prayer warrior. You just do what God tells you to do. We want to mess things up. In fact, the name of a servant looked at him and said, what if he told you to do all these other things? You'd have done those things. Why can't we just do exactly what God tells us to do? He finally swallowed his pride, and when he went and did what the Word of God told him to do, he dipped himself one time, two times. Three. And I can imagine he probably looked down to himself and says, ah, five times and I still look the same. Don't we want to give up on God so many times? But when he did it the seventh time, he came back home. Why? Because he was obedient to the word of God. I'll be honest, that Sunday I said I got saved. In my mind, I was trying to make a deal with God. God, I'll do. I'll go talk to a Christian that I know tomorrow, so I don't have to be in front of all these people. I'll do it tomorrow. That wasn't what God's word told me to do. He didn't say tomorrow. He said today. Today is that day. So many times we block what faith can do. Man's way sometimes may seem better. Sometimes we tend to get in God's way. And by getting in God's way, we stopped the miracle that God wanted to do. Can you imagine what would have happened to Naaman if he hadn't have done? You know what would have happened, don't you? He would have still been a leper. He wouldn't experience the miracle of God if he hadn't obeyed. There's people here today that will not experience the miracle of God because we don't obey his word. I got one other. I told you it's going to tell three. I'm going to tell one more. In the Gospel of John, we know the story about Lazarus. It said that Lazarus uh, in John eleven fourteen says, Then said Jesus unto them, Lazarus is dead. And can you imagine? Jesus said, I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent that you may believe, to believe means to have faith. Never let, let us go unto him. Thomas thought, why are we going to do this? If he's dead, he's dead. If nothing can be done, he said, we might as well go down there and die with him. That's what Thomas said. And all of a sudden, we started coming, the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and Martha heard he was coming. So Martha goes out to see Jesus. And what did Martha say? Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. And Martha said, still, in the house. And Martha, Mary stayed still in the house, and Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Folks, I've been gotten on to by a lot of women in the church before. That I should have done this, and I should have done that. Maybe some people told you, you ought to have done this, or you should have done that. But let me tell you what Martha was trying to tell God what God needs to do. You think anybody in this room is in a position to tell God what God needs to do? I don't think so. This would have been better if you'd done it this way. Martha, Martha. Mary the same way. If you'd been here, Lord, this wouldn't have happened. It broke Jesus' heart. But you know the story. He goes down, and Jesus looked at how they was uh, weeping. It said Jesus in verse 35. Jesus wept in verse 35. And then said unto the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that this even this man should have not died? Could he have not stopped this from happening? 
Could God have stopped tragedy from happening in our lives? He could. But he had a plan for it all. God had a plan for it all. I don't know what you've been through, but God's got a plan for it. He says he had one for Lazarus. We want to blame God a lot of times. We just got to bring out the faith and watch God's miracles. And what did he say? He turned to Mary and he said, I mean to Martha, he said, take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Now, here's, here's a woman that's questioning God because she, she don't understand it. True faith, you don't have to understand it. You know what you got to do to have true faith? Just do it. Just do it. And when she acted on the word of God, they rolled away the stone. And the Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of that tomb. What if she had never acted on the word of God? You have to have faith. And you got to have action. Not just words of faith, but actions of faith. Following the word of God. All of us need to follow the word of God. In conclusion here in Hebrews 11, it says verse 16. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly, whereof God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Isn't it amazing what God has prepared for us? If only we have faith. It says in verse 10, it says, For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builders and maker is God. I want what God has for me, don't you? In order to get that, I'm just going to have faith in him. He didn't have to explain how he's going to do it. I don't need to understand how it's going to happen. I just got to have faith and do what God tells me to do. Maybe God's told us something to do. Maybe you're watching from home. We need to put action on our faith. Commit ourselves to do what God tells us to do. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful that the faith that you have applied to every person, to the poorest, to the richest, to the wisest, to the feeblest, all we have to have is faith. And every person in this room today, every person watching today can have faith. And I pray we act upon that faith. As you lead us, for us to be able to see the miracles, I pray, Lord, that we don't allow things to block the miracles today, but to allow faith to unrelease the miracles of God. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. If you'll stand together with me without any kind of delay or hesitation. We don't need to question God, but maybe God told us something. God has led us into making some decision today or some commitment today to be able to see his miracles in our life, a better life, a better country. If you need to respond in any way, do so very quickly as we sing. Have thine own way. The Lord's way in have our life. Thine own way. We have that faith today. The no matter what everybody else does, I'm going to have faith. Mold me Not faith in myself or in circumstances, but I got faith in God. Let's hold our hearts and our mind upon keeping the faith in God. Anyone else have a word before we dismiss? Thank you for joining us here today. And Brother Elijah, dismiss us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for letting us be able to make it out here and see your word and worship you. 
pray that you all make it home safely when you get back to your Sunday routine.